Hey folks, happy homebrew Wednesday. I've got an interesting beer to try today, but first a public service announcement. Homebrew, hmm, can't get enough. So I just wanna do a quick PSA today because I don't believe we can talk about fermentation temp too much, okay? And for those of you who have heard me rattle on and on about this, um, I guess just turn the video off if this is too much for you. But if you haven't ever heard this or thought about it, it's worth thinking about, okay? Especially during the summer months when most of our houses hang out, you know, in the 70s, if you're lucky, you know, I've been in houses far hotter than that. So talking about fermentation temps and the things you can do to control that, Obviously, if you have the money for it, like a um, like a refrigerator or a chest freezer that you can hook a temp controller up to and use that to, con to control the exact temperature of the beer, because you can put a probe down in a thermo well inside your beer and it controls the actual temp of the beer and not just the ambient temp of the fridge around it. Okay, that's one option. Um, my buddy uses a cooling system called the Anvil. Um, it has a thermostat and a thermometer on it, but it basically just uses water circulation, I think, as far as I know, um, to cool the beer. Okay, so that's another method. Obviously, there's like cooling belts, like pads you can wrap around it with cooling mechanisms inside that can keep the beer cool. Heat belts in the wintertime, Heating, I mean, there's things we can do for that too, but since it's summer, I'm just gonna address cooling, okay, for now. And then for those of you who just find the coolest room in your house, because either you can't afford something else or you hadn't thought it out or for whatever reason, you stick it in a closet, a dark closet somewhere. Here's the thing. Most ale yeasts, if they get above 75, you know, you're kind of flirting with some too high temperatures. And we know that fermentation can heat your beer up, you know, by eight to 10 degrees. Say it only heats it up five, but it's in a 72 degree closet. 77 degrees now is where your beer's fermenting. That's a little high. I mean, your beer will be drinkable, um, but for someone like me who likes a nice clean beer, I don't want to deal with those esters that a lot of yeast produce in the upper ranges of the um, upper temps in the fermentation range. I'm going to try to find a way to cool mine, okay? Here's what I did with the Kolsch. I was in the same situation. My freezer has the uh, Oktoberfest in it, so it wasn't available. So I stuck the Kolsch back here in the back bathroom. It stays 68 back here, but I don't want the Kolsch to ferment in the 70s. I want to ferment in the 60s. So what I did, I just got me a little cooler and I made an ice bath. The ice has melted, but this water is still like 50 degrees, okay? So essentially what I did was change the ambient temp in the bathroom from 68 degrees over here where it was to 50 degrees inside the cooler. Okay, obviously my beer's not at 50 degrees. That's just the ambient temp. The beer is far warmer, especially now that it started to ferment. But essentially I was just able to lop off some heat. And that's what you want to do, you know, especially if you're flirting with those upper temperatures in the range. I had a guy ask me last week, he was making the chocolate, he was making the chocolate stout kit from Brewer's Best and it's a one gallon kit. He fermented it in his closet that I think he said was low 70s. But like I was talking about earlier, you know, now you're heating up to mid to upper 70s once it starts fermenting. 
for smaller batches like the gallon batch that he's doing i feel like an ice bath would be more effective because there's less beer to cool off okay you know if you're dealing with five gallons like this obviously the water is gonna have less impact on a five gallon batch than it would a one gallon batch because it has way more work to do with five gallons so especially if you're doing little one or two gallon batches and just want to keep it at a good range make an ice bath monitor the ice when it gets too warm put more ice in it okay on top of putting it in the coolest spot in your house okay just something i wanted to talk about today you know that's a cheap and easy for a bag of ice you know for a cooler most people have a tub or a cooler or a bucket or something they can use and a bag of ice and a little bit of water you know you can change your ambient temp you can drop your ambient temp you know 20 30 degrees that easily okay so it's something to think about i'm going to put a list of products the products i mentioned you know like the thermo well the temp controller the anvil that my buddy uses some similar products in the description below you might have to click show more or whatever down there um but i'm gonna i'm gonna list the products so you can price them so you can kind of see where you're at if you can't afford any of them if it's not worth it to you if you just don't want to mess with it consider the ice bath okay always google search or not just google always do a search um for the yeast that you're using search like for mine the coln since i'm doing the colch right now i'm using coln yeast from Lollamond. i just typed in coln fermentation range and usually the yeast packet will tell you but i like to read up on you know what the actual range is you're supposed to ferment it in and then I go from there. Okay, so do just a little bit of research on your yeast. And then, you know, if you're dealing with too much warmth, do what you can to cool it off a little bit. Okay, it'll be worth it in the end. Your beers will be cleaner and you'll thank yourself, even if you don't thank me. Okay, cheers guys. I'm gonna get out of the bathroom. It's freezing cold back here. Okay, so yeah i felt like i had to say that especially now during the summer months i feel like i don't talk about that enough because it seems like the most important thing to me um let's get into this beer real quick okay this beer right here is the key lime pie from tall grass brewing company in manhattan kansas i think it said Let's give it a pour let's check it out so i had this beer over the weekend in wichita kansas um we were at wichita brewing company after my brother's wedding my wife myself my brother and his wife all went to wichita Ooh. and we had this beer there or he ordered this beer i just tasted it and it was so good i had to order a six pack okay the key lime pie from Tall Grass Brewing Company. I think it said in Manhattan, Kansas. Cheers, guys. I can't even believe this beer is real. Ale brewed with lime peel. It's a sour. Okay, and my buddy really summed it up well when I told him I was bringing him one and he said, I think a sour is the perfect style, you know, for a key lime pie. I've had lagers with lime in them. They're good, but man, they really just straight up nailed the key lime pie taste in this beer. I can't believe it. It's so delicious. Here's what I'd say. If you like key lime pie, you'll like this beer. If you love key lime pie, you'll love this beer. If you hate key lime pie, you're gonna hate this beer. Cause it tastes like I just ate a piece of key lime pie. Man, 
awesome. I wouldn't mind, you know, putting some, some ready whip or something on top of this. Man, that'd be delicious. Heard a guy a while back, I think it was last fall. I was, we were in the message board talking about different beer flavors and he was trying to figure out a way to make a caramel apple beer. And people kept telling him, you know, you could do this and that with candy sugar and whatnot. And he kept saying, you know, like I thought of that, but this and this and this. And it ended up being a guy at the end just said, man, it sounds like you just want caramel apples. So foods don't always translate. You know, I would never want to drink a popcorn beer. But key lime pie, that really lends itself to a beer, and especially a sour, delectable. I feel like I'm at the pie shop right now, catching a little buzz. 4.2% ABV, nice and light, an easy drinker. I looked it up on Beer Advocate. It got a score of 85 or very good. I would say it's better than very good. But I'm not sure what the highest rating is on Beer Advocate. Um, I'm just gonna echo this guy, the sixth ring from California. He gave it a 4.1 out of five. I probably would give it a little bit higher. Pours relatively clear and golden in color, with a white, nice finger with head that fizzes away quickly. True. Leaving a mostly barren surface with a razor thin ring of suds around the edge of the glass. No lacing. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um. And usually I like a lot of foam on top. But I don't need it. In fact, like, this is the only one I have because I gave my brother four of them. Because he's the one that ordered the beer. He loved it so much. And normally I don't drink a lot of sours. They're kind of few and far between. But I fear I've made a huge mistake giving him four of them. Anywho. <clears throat> Smell. Lime is prominent with a whip of vanilla and some crackery malts. I can see all that. Taste follows the nose. Huge key lime flavor tartness up front and throughout. Hints of vanilla and graham crackery sweetness. I don't know about your graham crackery sweetness and all of this stuff. This guy probably knows way more about talking about beer than I do, obviously. But. piece of key lime pie that gives you a buzz mouthfeel light bodied with bitey carbonation slick easy drinker with a sharp crisp finish definitely overall this is what I'm looking for concept was key lime pie in a can and they nailed it so the sixth ring from California I agree this beer goodness sakes it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. If you're on an island and you can only have one beer for the rest of your life, what beer would you choose? Chances are I wouldn't choose the key lime pie, but I would long for it in my dreams. And I think I saw on the website that they don't even brew it anymore. Like, when was this canned? Oh, okay, so Wichita Brewing Company, where we were at, they canned this beer. So now it makes more sense to me why they had a tall grass beer in their tap room. Um, don't drink this beer if you're pregnant. Or may become pregnant. Uh, no, if, just <laughs> scratch that. If you may become pregnant, you can probably have this beer. I can't figure out when this was canned. 
it makes me wonder because if they don't make it anymore but they still have this beer in the tap room hmm it can't be that old or surely they wouldn't still have it it tastes fresh as a daisy trying to figure out when this thing was written available retired no longer brewed it says huh not sure about all that but <clears throat> you know like any great thing as I get older I realize that if a thing is great and it goes away there's something like enjoyment that you can get from having had it there's a sweetness in the memory and if this isn't being made anymore then this is all i got left right cheer can't believe it. Is it the best beer I've ever had? Maybe. But what I told my buddy earlier when I gave him one, I said, forget the fact that I love it so much. What's most impressive to me is the fact that it tastes so much like what they're calling it. it must be recycling day. Cheers, brother. I never knew the steering wheel in the recycling truck was on the right side, like the post office. Uh, what do you call that thing? A wagon? It's not a car, it's not a truck. It's not really a van. I feel like it's a wagon. So I still have the Kolsch in the back bathroom. Um, I think it's been three days since I shot that first part. So, the fermentation has taken off now. It's bubbling right along. Here in a couple days, after it's been in the ice bath for about a week, I'm gonna pull it out, since it will have gone through the majority of the fermentation, or the part of the fermentation that would most stress the yeast if the temp wasn't right. Okay, so now, after about a week, week and a half, once most of the fermentation finishes, I might even give it two weeks. I'm gonna put it back in the bedroom and like the diacetyl rest or the diacetyl, however you say that, the rest that I gave my lager to make sure everything got fermented out, I'm gonna raise the temp of the coal at the end to just make sure it finishes. And honestly, it's cold in that bathroom still. And that ice bath, so say the water level stops like right here i can see through the bucket a little bit and the beer goes up to here i'm feeling this beer and it's definitely very cool to the touch so i'm very confident that the ice bath just maybe it didn't save the beer but it helped me make the best beer i could possibly make okay so i'm super excited about that kolsch my American cream ale in the keg is getting rather low. So that's the replacement batch in there. Kind of needed to hurry. Not really. I got plenty of other good beer to drink. But it's nice to drink a homebrew, isn't it? I've got the White House honey ale, which honestly, I only drank that one for the video a couple weeks ago. I still have the others in the closet, just finishing up carbonation. I left them in there for another week, you know, just letting them finish. I'm gonna throw those in the fridge soon, so we'll have those to choose from. On top of the junk drawer beer, which is a coconut cream ale, or a naturally flavored, or a cream ale that was flavored with nat natural coconut. I almost said national coconut, I'm not sure why. Um, so I'm about to have a couple of different beers to choose from in there. So that'll get me to the Coles, you know, here in a couple weeks. Super excited. That's about 
that's about the size of it today. Normally about this point, I tend to just cheers and drink it and get out, but I just want to enjoy this. I want to savor every drop of it. And you know, as humans, we have this capacity for feeling empathy, relating to other people. That's why we cry during movies. That's why we get scared during movies. We're really good at putting ourselves in another's place. So the fact that I know my buddy still has his to drink tonight, I'll be riding that wave even after I finish this beer because I know he still has this to look forward to. Man, but when his are gone, we might have to go back to Wichita soon. I think that's the bottom line, okay? If we do it, I'll video it. I'll show you inside Wichita Brewing Co. It's an awesome, awesome place. Their pizza, their pizza is phenomenal. Or dank, as the kids say. It's, I had like, what, barbecue, barbecue chicken pizza with onions and jalapenos on it. And check out my Instagram if you wanna see a picture of it, at Beer Life Death. It was awesome. So. Totally good weekend all around. I guess I'm gonna leave you guys to it. It's been fun. Watch your fermentation temps. Do what you can to make the best beer you can possibly make. Because when you sit down and you're enjoying the fruits of your labor, you're gonna thank yourself. As I said, even if you don't thank me, okay? Cheers, guys and gals. Good to see you again, as always. Um, we'll see you next week.